equations. So second degree trig equations is uh, kind of like a quadratic equation if we had x squared plus x plus 5, let's say. Okay, degree 2 for this. Now we're going to be looking at trig equations where we have degree 2. So there'll be an exponent of 2 there. And similarly to quadratic equations, when we have degree 2, in order to solve them, we have to break them down by factoring. So we're going to be factoring a bunch of trig equations and then solving for their solutions in the given domain. So in order to solve them, I think it's good that we just practice how to factor them first. So the first example is not a second degree trig expression, it's just degree 1. But what do you see in common between the first term and the second term? Four. Good job, Derek. Okay, so we can factor out four. Eight divided by four is two. So we have two tan a, and four divided by four is one. So four times two tan a plus one. We just took out a common factor from the first and second term. For b, what is sine x squared and negative three sine x have in common? A sine x. So we can factor out a sine x. And we're left with sine x minus 3. Okay, this next one, it's an example of difference of squares. So, for example, if I had 4x squared minus 1, do you guys remember how to factor that down? Yeah. So, two binomials, and we get the conjugate. So I'll just do this on the side quickly. And we take the square root of the first term. That's going to go in the front of each binomial. So 2x, 2x. And the square root of the back term is 1. So that's going to go in the back of each. And then we have conjugates plus or minus. So now instead of x, we have sine x. So when we factor it down, we get 2 sine x plus 1. And 2 sine x minus 1. Next one we're dealing with cosecant. It's probably a lot easier if you let a variable represent cosecant x. And if I were to write this as x squared, or sorry, a squared minus 3a minus 28, would you guys know how to factor that down? Yeah. Okay, so we need two numbers that multiply to negative 28 and add to negative 3. Those would be negative 7 and positive 4. So we can break it up into two binomials right away a minus 7, a plus 4. But we have to remember that we didn't start with a's, we started with cosecant x. So we've got to replace our a's then back with cosecant x. So we get cosecant x minus 7 and cosecant x plus 4. And lastly, we have a coefficient of 2 in front of our first term or leading coefficient of 2, so we're going to have to factor by decomposition. If you guys want, let's just do a replacement again, substitution. Let's let a equal cosine x, and from there we get 2a squared plus 7a minus 4. So in order to factor this, we need two numbers that multiply to negative 8. So 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. And two numbers that add to positive 7. So we get 8 and negative 1. Decomposition, we've got to break up the middle term. So instead of 7a, we're going to have 8a and negative 1a. And then we just repeat our first and last term. So 2a squared plus 8a minus a minus 4. Then we factor by grouping. A little plus sign in between each group. And we take out the common factors from each group. So in our first group, a common factor is 2a. We're left with a plus 4. In the second group, common factor is a negative 1. And we're left with a plus 4. So you always want to get a common binomial that you can then factor out. So taking out a plus 4, we are left with 2a minus 1. And lastly, we can't forget that we started with a equals cosine x. So replace your a's with cosine x. So we get cosine x plus 4 
times 2 cosine x minus 1. Junior class change. So, that was a little speed review of how to factor. If you use the substitution, it's just like how we factored in grade 10 and 11. Okay, it's not bad. You can always just stop that. Uh, before we get into how to solve second degree equations algebraically using the factoring skills, let's just visually see what the solutions would look like if we were to solve it using the graphical approach. So Xander, there's two ways we can solve using our graph. There's the x-intercept method or the intersection method, and you get to choose. Uh, intersection. Yeah. Or what? Intersection. Okay, sounds good. So that means we need two graphs. Our y1 will be the left-hand side. So 2 sine x squared. And you'll have to put it in your calculator like that, so that's why I'm writing it like this. Okay, and then your y2 is going to be 1 minus sine x. And just be aware of your domain. That's going to help you with your window settings. So given the domain is 0 to 2 pi, what mode do I need to be in? Radian. Okay, and I'm going to change my window settings to negative 1 to 2 pi. And let's scale up by 30 degrees or pi over 6. Do make sure you put the pi over 6 in there, not 30. And on my y min, I'll go negative 2, y max 2, and I'll scale it up by half. Then I'm going to put in my graphs. So for y1, we said 2 and then sine x squared. And then we're going to go for y2, 1 minus sin x. And then let's hit the graph. Alright, so if we're using the intersection method, that means our solutions will be the intersection points. So we're finding the solution here, here, and here. So to trace those points, we're just going to go with second trace, number five. And it's on the middle one, so I'll just start there. Enter, enter, enter. Now we're getting the decimal of 2.617, they'd like our answers to be exact multiples of pi. So let's just quit out of the graph, and I'm going to write my x value, and then divide it by 1 pi. Then get your fraction, math enter, enter. So my first solution will be 5 pi over 6. Now we just need to trace the other two. Is anyone having trouble finding that first one? Okay. So second trace, number five. Uh, let's go to the first one now. So I'll move my cursor. Okay, once you have your x value, you can just quit out of here. Press x divided by pi. Find the fraction, and you should get 1 over 6 pi. And has anyone traced the last intersection? It didn't work. I'm not trying to do it. it didn't work? Okay, we're going to talk about that. So, I'm going to trace the last one. Enter. So it's taking a little bit of time. When I quit out of here and I go x divided by pi, we get this 
and when I try and put it into a fraction or exact form, it doesn't work. So let's just talk about the x value for a second. This was our solution, 4.712, etc. If I want to convert that to a degree measurement, I'm going to have to multiply by 180 degrees divided by pi. So let's just go ahead and do that. So multiply by 180 divided by pi. And you're seeing that we're getting 270.0000. It is so close to 270 degrees. If we were to round to the nearest degree, it would be 270. Okay, so we're just going to count our last one. If you want to put that into a radian, okay, 270 degrees, you'd have to multiply by pi over 180. But we want to keep it in terms of pi. So we're going to go 270 divided by 180. And you should get 3 over 2. Okay, so our last solution, 3 pi over 2. So just be aware there might be some times where you're going to have to think a little bit further than what the fraction is. Like the, it didn't give us the fraction, we had to just probe a little further, figure out what was the degree, degree measure really close to, and then convert it into radians. Okay? Um, so yesterday we introduced talking about general solutions. General solutions would be looking at a domain that goes on forever. So x is an element of all real numbers. Right now, these three solutions, that's just for the domain 0 to 2 pi. we got to expand these solutions so that it goes on forever to infinity or forever to a ne negative infinity. So all we have to do is take each solution and we're going to add one period of sign which would be 2 pi f. Okay, the second solution was 5 pi over 6, so we have to add one period, 2 pi n. And the third solution was 3 pi over 2, so we have to add a full period, 2 pi times n. And make sure you include that n is an integer. So we solved for this graphically, now we're going to solve the exact same question algebraically. So algebraically we want to factor. So in order to factor, you first set your equation equal to zero. So move everything. left hand side and set the equation equal to zero. So that gives us 2 sine x squared plus sine x minus 1 equals zero. Okay, then we're going to let a variable represent our sine x. Okay, so using substitution, we're just going to make this look a little bit nicer for us. We get 2a squared plus a minus 1 equals 0. And then the third step is to factor. Okay, so we need two numbers that multiply to negative 2 but add to positive 1. And we're going to factor by decomposition. So two numbers that multiply to negative 2 and add to positive 1 would be positive 2 and negative 1. Factor by grouping. And we end up with 2a factored out of the first group, leaving us with a plus 1. And if we factor negative 1 out of the second group, we also get a plus 1. So a plus 1 is a common binomial that can be factored out, and we're left with 2a minus 1. So 
let's forget the trig stuff right now. If you were to solve for x-intercepts from these two binomials equaling 0, what would your solutions be? From this first binomial, a equals negative 1. And from the second one, a equals positive 1 half. A, but we have to remember that a was actually sine x. So from our solutions here, a we have sine x equals negative 1, and we have sine x equals 1 half. And now we have first degree trig equations that we have to solve, and this is what we did yesterday. Okay, so when you think about sine, remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? And on the unit circle, your hypotenuse is 1, so really this is like your y value. What val or where on your unit circle will y equal negative 1? Right here. Okay, you'll be at the point 0, negative 1. And the degree to go around to that is 270 degrees. So you can think about the reference angle on the unit circle, or you can go back to what we've done before. First, we have to use our cast rule. Okay, the ratio is negative, so that means our solution will be in quadrants three or four. Then we have to find our reference angle. Okay, so x will be equal to second sine one, and you should get 90 degrees. When you apply 90 degrees in the third quadrant, 180 plus 90 puts you at 270. When you apply it in the fourth quadrant, 360 minus 90 is 270. So the solution for sine x equals negative 1 is that x equals 270 degrees. Okay, we'll talk about the radians after. Let's just solve it for now. Okay, now let's look at sine x equals a half. You can figure out what the angle is by remembering your special triangles. Sine is y, so your y value will be a half. And just memorizing the special triangles, this will be root 3 over 2. And that means my special triangle is 30 degrees. So the reference angle will be 30 degrees. Or if you forget that, let's figure out where our solutions will exist. C, A, S, T. The ratio is positive, so we'll have solutions in quadrants 1 and quadrant 2. Then our reference angle, we can solve by going second sine, 1 half. And if you put that in your calculator, you'll get 30 degrees. So applying 30 degrees in quadrant 1, we get a solution of 30 degrees. Appl uh, applying a reference angle of 30 degrees in quadrant 2, we have a rotation angle of 150. So x equals 30 degrees and 150 degrees. That's from this trick equation. So all in all, I have three solutions. 30 degrees, 150 degrees, and 270 degrees. I'll just state that over here. So x equals 30 degrees, 150 degrees, 270 degrees. And in radians, we get pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, and 3 pi over 2. So this is the solution between the domain 0 and 2 pi. For part B, we have to state the general solution. And it's going to be exactly the same as what we did on the previous example. Okay, x will equal pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. Okay, 5 over 6 pi plus 2 pi n. And 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. Okay, that's your general solution.
So after seeing our first example solving that algebraically, do we have any questions? Yeah. So we have a reference angle of 30 degrees. Cosine has a positive ratio, which means we'll have solutions in quadrants one yeah. and quadrants two. So if we're in quadrants two or quadrant two, we have 180 here. We're going to go 180 minus 30. That gives us 150. Okay. Any other questions? Chris, is that under any? No? Okay, let me know if you change your mind. Okay, let's carry on. So our domain for the solutions will be between 0 and 2 pi. We need to first find the solutions in that domain, and then secondly, we have to find the general solution. So we've already factored this. You guys can flip back if you want. But when we factor, we got 2 sine a plus 1 and 2 sine a minus 1. Okay, we already factored that together on the first page. So now we just have to solve. From our first factor, we get sine A equals, move the 1 over first, we get negative 1, and then divide by 2, we get negative 1 over 2. From the second factor, we get sine A equals, add the 1 over first, then divide by the 2, so sine A equals 1 over 2. So for both trig equations here, the ratio is exactly the same. We have a half, but one is positive, one is negative. So our solution will be in all four quadrants, and sine will be positive and negative. So now we just need to find our reference angle. Yeah? Do you even have to uh, factor it, though? Like, could you not just add the 1 over and then divide the 4 and then... Take and then square root both? Yeah, because then you use plus or minus. You could, but sometimes you run into problems where it doesn't work out, so I'd recommend always factor. Um, there's cases where you might have a, um, like a single term, and if you were to divide that to the other side, like say sine x, if you divided that to the other side, then it wouldn't work out. Um, in this case, yes, it works. But I'd recommend just factor it. Okay, reference angle. We can use our special triangles, or we can just go second sine half. Okay, and if you apply your, your special triangles, or if you do it this way, you should get that x is equal to 30 degrees. So we need to apply a reference angle of 30 degrees in all four quadrants. So in quadrant one, 30 degrees. In quadrant two, 180 minus 30 is 150. In quadrant three, 180 plus 30 is 210. And in quadrant four, 360 minus 30 is 330 degrees. Okay, keep in mind these solutions are supposed to be in radians because our Domain is in radians, so we just have to convert now. So x equals pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, uh, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. Okay, you can verify those just by doing the conversion. So 30 divided by 180, you get 1,6. 150 divided by 180, 5,6. 210 divided by 180, 7, 6, and 330 divided by 180, 11, 6. Okay. So this is my solution for the domain 0 to 2 pi. Now we need to state our general solution. So this 
before we do that, I'm just going to talk about some of the solutions we've already found. Okay, if we look at this solution here, and we were to rotate 180 degrees, I would get the solution in quadrant 3. So 30 degrees and 210 degrees, they differ by 180 degrees. Similarly, if I looked at my solution in quadrant 2, and then I rotated 180 degrees, I would get my solution in quadrant 4. So that means that my solution 150 differs by 180 to get 330 degrees. So my general solution, I actually only need to list these two solutions and then add 180 degrees times m. Okay, so general solution, x will equal pi over 6 plus pi n, and then 5 pi over 6 plus pi n, where n is an integer. Okay, that's your general solution. So if you have the option to condense your general solution or combine it, always do that, okay? Make it more simplified. And you can just do that by testing it. Just subtract 150, or sorry, 210 minus 30, see what you get. 330 minus 150, see what you get. And you get 180 degrees. All right, 10x squared plus 10x. What is common in both terms? 10, so, or 10x. We can take a 10x out, and we're left with 10x plus 1 equals 0. From our first factor, we get that 10x equals 0. And from our second factor, we get 10x equals negative 1. Okay, our domain is between 0 and 2 pi, so we could have solutions in all four quadrants. 10x equals 0, 0 is positive and negative, so we can have solutions in all four quadrants. I'm just going to talk about the unit circle for a second, though. Just a reminder, 10, the ratio is equal to, maybe I'll just use an angle instead. So 10 of theta is equal to the ratio of y over x. If we have 0 is our ratio, that means y had to be 0. So y is going to be 0 here and here. And the angle here would be 0 degrees in quadrant 1. The angle here in quadrant 2 would be 180. Quadrant 3, 180. Or quadrant 4, 360 degrees. Um, if you don't recall the unit circle, you can always find your reference angle. Sometimes it's probably more simple to just go second tan and then zero. And you'll get a reference angle of zero degrees. And if you apply that in all four quadrants, you will get the zero, the 180, and the 360. So just talking a little bit slower, reference angle zero, quadrant one, zero plus zero is zero. Quadrant 2, 180 minus 0 is 180. Quadrant 3, 180 plus 0, 180. And quadrant 4, 360 minus 0 is 360. So for quadrants 1, 2, 3, 4, we have solutions 0 degrees, 180 degrees, and 360 degrees. Written in radians as 0, pi, and 2 pi. So that's from our first degree trig equation on the left. Now we have to find the solution for the other first degree trig equation. So 10x equals negative 1. So thinking about tan, C-A-S-T, we're going to use our casserole. Tan will be negative here and here. Okay, again, we're going to have uh, a ratio of y over x. So the only combination where we would get negative 1 is if we had root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2. So I automatically know, using my special triangles, that this is a reference angle of 45. But if you're unsure, and you don't want to draw out all your special triangles, then you can just go second tan plus 0 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 
plug in a 1, and you get 45 degrees. So as I'm going through this, you guys can be testing it on your calculator or be drawing out your special triangles. So let's apply our special or our reference angle of 45 degrees in quadrants 2 and in quadrants 4. So if I apply my special, or sorry, I don't know why I'm saying special, uh, reference angle of 45 degrees in quadrant 2, that means I'm going 180 minus 45. So that gave me an angle of 135 degrees. And then if I apply a reference angle of 45 degrees in quadrant 4, I'm going 360 minus 45, and you get 315 degrees. So x will equal 135 degrees and 315 degrees. So all of the solutions together between the domain of 0 and 2 pi will be 0 Sorry, let's put these into radians first. 135. Is that 3 pi over 4? Yep. And 7 pi over 4 for 315? Yep. Okay. So we have 0, 3 pi over 4, pi, 7 pi over 4, and 2 pi. These are your solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So let's see if there's any correlations between the degrees or the radians to see if we can condense and create a general solution. Let's look on the left hand side. What is the difference between 0, pi, and 2 pi? 180. Good. So for our general solution, okay, x will equal pi n. Now let's look at, on the right hand side, when we solve for 10x equals negative 1, we got solutions of 135 and 315. They have a difference of 180 degrees. So we can write the solution as 3 pi over 4 plus pi n. Every 180 degrees we will have another solution. And n is an element of integers. Okay, that's our general solution. Any questions here, Booker? No? Okay, now we're going to look at some reciprocal trig ratios and solving their equations. <laughs> So you guys can start off by substituting a variable in for a cosecant. Actually, sorry, let's just start from the beginning. We have to find the zeros. This is written as f of x, so if we have to find the zeros, you can just automatically write it as 0 equals cosecant x squared minus 3 cosecant x minus 28. Okay, you have to set it equal to 0. Then we're going to let a variable such as a equal cosecant x. So then we get 0 equals a squared minus 3a minus 28. When we factor that, we get a minus 7 and a plus 4. So two numbers that multiply to negative 28 and add to negative 3. Negative 7 and 4. And before I sub a equals cosecant x back in, Let's just solve for what a equals. a equals 7, and a equals negative 4. So now I can replace a with my cosecant x. So cosecant x equals 7, and cosecant x equals negative 4. Now we don't have any keys on our calculator to find cosecant, so we're just going to use the reciprocal. Sine x equals 
equals 1 over 7. We take the reciprocal of the ratio. 8 as well as sine x equals 1 over negative 4. So, does 1 over 7 or... Senior class change. Or 1 over 4 uh, sound familiar when you're thinking about special triangles? No. So we're going to get a, a degree that's not on the special triangles. So we will have to use our calculator for this. Okay, so first of all, let's just figure out what quadrants we're going to be solving in. And take a look at the degree to, or the domain to start. 0 to 180. Although sine is positive, well, I guess for sine it works out. Because sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2, which happen to go between 0 and 180. So our solutions will be in 1 and 2. Now let's figure out our reference angle. So we're going to go second sign, 1 over 7. And I just need a little help. What do you guys get? Make sure you're in degree mode, please. 8.2. 8.2. So answer to the nearest degree will be at 8 degrees. So if I apply my reference angle in quadrant 1, I get 0 plus 8 is 8 degrees, and I apply my reference angle in quadrants 2, I get 180 minus 8 is 172. Okay, now let's look here. Okay, sine has a negative ratio. Here and here. Does that fit in the domain? No. Do I have to solve it then? No. Does not fit in domain. So my solutions are 8 degrees and 172. Now, if you did go ahead and solve for the reference angle and then figure out the angles itself, just please make sure you always check the restricted domain and ask, does it fit there? before you state what the solutions are. All right, last one. We need solutions between negative 180 and positive 180, or negative pi and positive pi. First, let's set our equation equal to 0. So we have 0 equals 2 cosine theta squared plus 5 cos theta minus 3. Are you guys liking substitution for factory? Yeah. Okay, some of you know. Most people say yes, so I'm just going to keep rolling. Um, we're going to let A equal cosine theta. So then we'll get 0 equals 2A squared plus 5A minus 3. So help me out. I need two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to 1. Or sorry, add to 5. Perfect. 6 and negative 1. So because I have a leading coefficient, I need to factor by decomposition. So 2a squared. I'm going to break up the middle term into positive 6a minus a and then minus 3. Factor by grouping. Okay, out of my first group, I can factor out a 2a. I'm left with a plus 3. And out of my second group, I can factor out a negative 1. I'm left with a plus 3. Both groups have a common binomial, a plus 3, so let's factor that out. And I'm left with 2a minus 1. So I get a equals negative 3, and a equals 1 half. But a is not a, a is cosine theta. So we have cosine theta equals negative 3, and cosine theta equals 1 half. Let's start with cosine theta equals negative 3. If you were to try and find your reference angle, you would figure out that it does not exist. And I'll just draw you a picture. Cosine, what is the max? 1, and what's the min? Negative 1. Would there be a negative 3 
No. Okay, so the reason why this doesn't work is because it doesn't fit into the graph itself. Okay, it exceeds where the graph exists. So there's no solutions for this part. Now let's do cosine theta equals one half. So special triangles. <coughs> We get a reference angle of 60 degrees, or you could have solved using your calculator second cosine one half, and you get 60 degrees. So taking a look at our domain, that means our solution will go from negative pi to positive pi, or on a unit circle, it will go to pi or it will go to negative pi. So in the positive direction, if our reference angle is 60, okay, let's just keep in mind where cosine is positive, here and here. We won't have a solution in quadrant 2, only quadrant 1 for 0 to pi. So our solution is 60 degrees. For 0 to negative pi, we'll only have a solution here, and going in the negative direction, it has to be negative 60 degrees. So my overall solution for this is that theta equal 